Blog Talk Radio. everyone. Thank you for joining us on Get Inspired with Joyce. I'm your host, Joyce Ajanoku. We have another interesting show for you today. We are talking about women, yay, sexual assault, domestic violence, and abuse. Um, first of all, before we dive into the show, uh, you can join us live by dialing 646-478-5589 or on Facebook, um, Get Inspired with Joyce. We're also on Twitter, um, get Inspired, W-J-O-Y. Our mission on the show is to hopefully encourage and help give you the push you need to launch out and take a leap of faith. The show is designed to turn the light bulb on in your mind and open you up to your deeper self to help you realize what you have already been given by God, your gifts, talents, and, of course, purpose. I believe and I always say everyone is created by the Creator, um, with a purpose in mind, and our life assignment is to figure out what our purposes are. I also believe sometimes we go through stuff in order to be a blessing to others. The things that we go through sometimes open us up to our greater calling and destiny. Today, today, a very special guest is a sister of mine, she has turned our experience into blessing others. I, I so much appreciate a love for God and also a passion to empower women. She's an advocate for women. She organized the very first annual Prince George's County Sexual Assault and Awareness Forum in April 2014. So that was a few months ago. And that enabled critical communication between legislators legislative officials, victims, and community advocates. She's a fantastic woman full of wisdom, and she has been a blessing to me since the first time I met her. I tell you, I mean, I can go on and on about her. She's such a wonderful woman. Um, she was assaulted as a teenager publicly, and our story has given birth to a nonprofit. Please help me welcome a very special sister of mine, Ebony Johnson. Ebony? Are you there? Yes. Thank you it's, so much, Joyce, for blessing me with this phone call and for allowing welcome. me to be on your show today. You're welcome. Thank you so much for coming on the show. You are such a blessing to me, and I'm like, uh, I need to bring you on my show, and um, you know, so you can be a blessing as well to our um, to our listeners. You you are such a you have so much. Um, to offer, you're, you're such a woman full of wisdom, and I appreciate God in your life. Um, so before we even get started, you know, I know a little bit, of course, I know your story. We talked about it where we met in, in class, uh, Kunesta class. Um, kind of tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, um, what you do, and, of course, you know, uh, your, your nonprofit a little bit, if you will. Yes. Yeah. Yes, well, um, I am a 14-year Air Force veteran, um, so I served in the United States Air Force. Um, I am currently a government contractor and a technical writer by trade, and because of my passion and, and be, in spite of my assault, and I also was a victim of domestic violence as well, I changed that and became an advocate for domestic violence victims and sexual assault of victims, and, and it's actually helped in my journey and process of healing. Um, so mm -hmm. following that Prince George's County um, Sexual Assault and Awareness Forum, all types of community advocates and organizations and legislators actually came to me and want to help me to launch my nonprofit, which is the next chapter. Wow, that's wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. So tell us a little bit about the nonprofit. So you haven't started. Have you started it? I mean, it's been going on. You've been doing a lot of advocacy, like, stuff for women, empowering women in this manner. So is your nonprofit now on or is it still in the works? Or 
Yes, currently it's still in the works. So we are looking for some hard chargers and some board members and also um, for sponsors for our organization. But the whole vision of the next chapter is dedicated to advocacy, um, basically pushing forward with legislation in support Mm -hmm. of not just domestic violence and sexual assault, but all victims of violent crimes. And we also want to provide support services to the victims, such as career guidance, um, career help. Um, We want to help them identify safe places where they um, can live, like safe housing. We also want to provide um, resources to other sexual assault organizations, like for counseling, um, any type of life skills that our victims may require. So we want to be that one-stop shop for victims of violent crimes. Mm, that that's just wonderful. That's wonderful, and um, I like I said, I know a little bit about your story. Um, I know it's not something that everyone or people sometimes feel comfortable sharing. Um, but do you mind talking about it a little bit before I go into the questions, so people are kind of see where we're coming from based on you know. I know I talked about it a little bit as a teenager. You were assaulted, and you know this is one of the stories that you are using to empower women and strengthen women, allowing them to come out and be who you know talk about it publicly. So if you can tell us a yes. little bit, if you don't mind, yeah. Yes, that's that's fine. Um, I was a victim of sexual assault at the age of fifteen years old. Um. I was walking through a park in Philadelphia in Huntington Park, and a a man actually came up to me, and initially it was a robbery where he was trying to take my money, and I didn't have any Mm. money. So he basically told me that he was going to take me, and I ran away from him and ran to a crowd of bystanders. So they were there, and every single one of them said that they did not intervene because they thought it was a domestic issue. Mm-hmm. So he essentially mm-hmm. raped me in front of a group of bystanders, and not one of them lifted a finger to help me. So, you know, um, that's me for the rest of my life. I always said, you know, if I'm standing out there and I see something that's not right, I'm going to make sure I get involved because I needed their help, and not one person helped me. And I went through the whole process. Um, you know, I reported the rape to the police officers, and I went to the hospital and they conducted the forensic um, exam on me. And another thing that we need to highlight, because rape kits is a big deal this year in legislation, that they took the forensic exam, but they didn't use the evidence to prosecute my rape wow. because they caught him that evening, and they asked me to identify him at midnight. I couldn't see. I was distressed. I was very disoriented. And they asked me to identify him from picture lineup. And I was not able to identify him, so they released him. But come to find out, wow. they could have they could have actually arrested him and used the forensic evidence against him, but they chose not to, and he ended up raping another woman later. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Well, so you know what? What I'm excited about that you you are one of those people that as is standing up right now and wants to do something about that, at least create awareness. So some of us have not experienced that, but or being involved in any assault of every, any form, how do I recognize it? And I, I believe I believe that so many, uh, there's several, um, they're, uh, they're a, a, a job, a, my job, or, you know, at our, whatever we work there there could be several, you know, assaults or harassment, and sometimes we don't recognize them. How will I know, I mean, how will I know if I'm being harassed or, you know, abused in any way? Well, first, the, the most important thing is just recognizing the definition of abuse because many times mm-hmm. people have this um, preconceived notion of what abuse is, but abuse is physically hurting or trying to hurt someone intentionally or recklessly, so that could be hitting, pushing, shoving, or even verbal abuse and emotional Mm. abuse. Um, It's sexual assault, which um, is the same as rape or, you know, Mm -hmm. um, sexual abuse. And also um, one thing that tends to happen often is most people think of rape as intercourse, but... Mm. Rape can be several things. It could be someone um, touching any of your body parts and 
you don't want them to touch you. That is considered sexual assault and sexual abuse, and we need to be aware of that. And also, if someone is trying to do that to you, let them know, stop, don't touch me. You know, I don't want you to touch me that way and report it. Um, Also, another sign of abuse is making someone afraid. Like, you know, you might be afraid to walk past someone or, you know, someone trying to intimidate you or essentially trying to bully you. That's, That's another sign of abuse. And then one that happens often that people don't report is harassing, stalking, threatening, hitting someone, or disturbing someone's peace. These these are all signs of abuse. And it doesn't right. have to be a domestic partner. Um, you know, it could be your domestic partner. It could be a friend. It could be a coworker. It could be an associate. It could be a next-door neighbor. But all of those people can actually abuse you, and, and you need to recognize the signs and report it. I, I would just say, say, you know, as long as, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would just say, as long as you're feeling uncomfortable, right? From what you're saying, if you're uncomfortable about it, then you mm-hmm. need to do something right away, right? Yes, yes, report it right. immediately, or you know, yes. if if you're a child, um, make sure that you tell a trusted adult, whether it's your parent, it could be an older sibling, your aunt, your uncle, your pastor. Anybody in wow. your school, like the school administrators, just make sure that you tell someone if if it's happening to you as a woman or a male, because men are victims of abuse too. Tell someone, you know, report it. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a hotline. We have one eight hundred seven nine nine SAFE, which is the national okay. U.S. hotline for all victims. So you can call one hundred percent confidential, so you don't have to worry about them reporting it to anyone but they'll provide you with the resources of where you can go. Because, like, say, for instance, you don't want to report it to the legal authorities, but you just need someone to talk to or a counselor or different resources, they will provide you with all of that. Right. Wow, that's that's amazing. And sometimes I feel maybe people don't know that this information is available to them. And mm-hmm. I've, I've heard stories of people, you know, they're going through stuff like this and they were silent because they didn't know what next to do, what else to do. And I've heard stories of people that, you know, even sometimes I'm like, okay, flirting or a joke or a sexual harassment, what is it? When do I know that, you know, okay, I need to draw the line here. It's starting to get really, really. Sometimes is it possible, let me put it this way, is it possible for someone to abuse someone and not even know it? Yeah, or harass um, someone and not even know it. And that's where, um, so with my organization, the next chapter, the number one goal for us is to raise awareness but open up the discussion about abuse mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. different types of abuse and how it makes the victims feel but also signs that you may be an abuser. We need to have those discussions because many times we just don't talk about it. We just say abuse is bad, but okay, what is mm-hmm. abuse? Um, so, yes, it very well could be that you're the abuser, you're the one making those inappropriate jokes, or you're the one, you know, invading someone's space or touching someone inappropriately, and you may not be aware. And as a victim, sometimes they may not even be aware that they're being abused until later. Hmm. So we want to open up the door of discussion, the window of discussion, and say, you know what, these are the signs of abuse. This is what happens you know, Mm -hmm. when a person is abused or, you know, these are actions that you need to be cautious of. Like I would say if two people are in a relationship and then you have someone that might be controlling or abusive and they may say, well, I grew up like this. This is how my father treated my mother or this is how Mm -hmm. my mother treated my father. But it's Mm -hmm. abuse, whether it's going through people's cell phones, you know, demanding the the passwords to all of your social media accounts, um, tracking where are you going, what time are you going to be home, you know, who are you going Mm -hmm. out with, what outfit are you wearing. Those are all signs of abuse and control. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. And thank thank you, you know, for (laughs) talking about that because sometimes I'm like, okay, what is it anyway? I'm confused. I don't know what to do. And you're just going with the flow and enduring this thing, and then it leads to to something – to something totally out of control, and you're thinking, oh, I saw the signs all along, but I didn't do anything about it. So I, I oh, think yes. it's great what you're doing. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's uh, it's 
awesome what you're doing. What you're doing is great, you know, just to create an awareness and let people know about it. And one of the questions I want to um, ask you as well is, you know, your, your, your business, I would love to be a part of it. How can other people get involved, you know, in your nonprofit and, of course, this movement? Oh, yes. Well, um, you definitely can become involved by volunteering. So we, we have some upcoming activities um, that you can volunteer and participate in. You can support our upcoming functions. Just come and just attend. Um, you can also spread the word about our organization. And I want everyone that's educated about domestic violence and abuse to tell someone about it, you know, talk about it, because we do need to open up these discussions, not just with each other, but also our children, so they're not abusing each other. Yes, exactly. And I, and I know, you know, you are, you, 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 you basically empower women and you do a lot of stuff. I know you probably wear several hats and some of it I haven't even talked about in your intro. So what else are you working on? In line oh, with yes. This? So I, yeah, I have a whole on? list. <laughs> Yes, I have a whole list written down. Um, basically, so Domestic Violence Awareness Month is in October. Um, we have a okay. fashion show in Baltimore at the Wind Up that's going to be in support of victims of sexual assault and also the women's legislative issues. So that'll be October. Right now we're working on the date, but it should be within the first two weeks of October. Um, we have a domestic violence forum that we're going to be hosting in Montgomery County. And this one is going to be to address the issues of domestic violence, the media perceptions, and, and some of the things going on right now with domestic violence, whether it's, um, you know, the controversial comments made recently in the mm -hmm. media and um, just what is domestic violence? Um, why is it becoming the thing to do where women are beating up on other women or men are beating up on the women, the women are beating up on the men or men are beating up on each other. Where is this coming right. from and how do we stop mm -hmm. it? And also the one thing I want to address is how does this impact our children? Because the children, mm -hmm. you know, see the father and mother not only beating up each other, but using demeaning words towards each other, which is also a sign of abuse. How does this impact our children as to how they're treating each other? And even with the social media, like you see all these videos where you see people getting beat up on the videos and they're reposting, you know, how is that impacting our society and, and the violence in our society? Um, the other initiative that I'll be working on is the launch party for the Raw Beauty Calendar. Um, that's going to be in Prince George's County at the treetop. And that will be on October the 25th. And basically the Raw Beauty Calendar, now this is a different initiative. It's um, sponsored by the Atikau Foundation, and okay. it celebrates survivorship and empowers survivors of both cancer and domestic violence through artistic expression, through love, and through beauty. Wow. Wow! 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 Awesome! Awesome! And I, I saw, I saw. I, of course, I follow you on uh, the uh, social media, and I was looking at some of your pictures from uh, Bust Up. Oh yes. So how did that come about? I'm interested. I saw the women too, and I'm like, oh, I, I, this looks interesting. And I, how yes. happy you about? It. Well, yes. Well, so I'm a recent graduate of Bust Up. I graduated in February of this year yes. and um I will say two months after I graduated from Boston was when I launched the actual sexual assault and awareness action forum. So I was empowered and Boston gave me the courage to use my voice and I also was nominated for the first annual Boss of the Year Award from Boston. Um the actual organization which was founded by Miss Emily Eras and um it also, she has a powerful staff, Joy, I can't even say her name, Joy Hagen, um, Jillian Cateau, um, Emily Anyos, and um, Elaine Mao. They're the whole entire staff. They're very powerful. And the whole purpose of the organization is professional development, is focused on work, love, wellness, mm. and equally important sustainable success for women. Wow, wow. That sounds pretty interesting. 
Wow, wow, wow. That that's um I, I know we have some people listening online as well and I would like to um just get more information about you. And of course, like I said, we have a like a YouTube version of the show. I'm gonna put all the information that you gave us on that so people can refer to that, you know, in terms of, you know, um where to get help or more information about you. But well, quickly, how can we get in touch with you like moving forward if people want to follow you or keep in touch with you on social media? Oh yes. Yeah. So first off, um you can visit the next chapter website which is http dot dot slash slash democracy dot com the next chapter. So democracy dot com the next chapter. Um, that's our official website. Um, I can be found on Twitter at Elise Lady, and that's A L Y S E Lady L A D Y, and also on Facebook um, under Ebony Johnson. I can be found. And um, again, if victims want to reach out, they need help, they need support. If they visit the Next Chapter website, I will not only help them but I'll put them in the right direction of where they can find support or the resources that they need. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you again for coming on the show. And, um, you know, just closing us out, that's kind of all the time we have. But, Ebony, I really want to thank you so much for coming on the show. I know I just told you, and you're like, yes, I'll be a part of it. So thank you so much. For coming on the show, um, um, and I, I look forward to having you even more coming on the show as your project is being done. If you if you would love to come back on the show, we'd love to have you and uh, tell us more about what you're doing. Oh, yes. Well, thank you so much. It's been a true blessing just coming on your show, raising awareness about domestic violence and sexual assault. Um, you know I love you, and I support you, and I appreciate you empowering other women because this is what we need. We need to talk and we need to have these discussions and empower each other. Absolutely. And love you, love you back. Um, So, you guys, thank you so much. That's all the time we have tonight. And, again, I just want to thank our special, special guest, Ebony Johnson, for coming on the show. And we hope um, in some way we've encouraged you or basically just, you know, maybe open something up in you um, that would allow you to be more, um, I guess, sensitive about your environment. And um, in some, this is a really sensitive issue. And if you're going through stuff like, like this, don't keep it to yourself. Or if you're being harassed or or it's a continuous thing, find help. Talk to someone you can trust. Um, I'm going to get more information from Miss Ebony, and I'll put all that stuff on my website, her website, um, just basically for people to get more information about this. Um, again, even I believe personally, sometimes we go through stuff just to um, encourage other people, and the things that we go through sometimes, in the case of Miss Ebony here, she has used our experience to be a blessing to others, um, what she went through, she she's creating a movement so other women will not go through stuff like that. Or if you're going through stuff like that, there is a way out. So don't think, you know, the things that you're going through right now, it's maybe the end of it. No, it's not. There's so many that the, the, the help is on the way, help is available to you. The people that are, you know, in for women, fighting for women, making sure, you know, we are we are being addressed and, you know, just making sure that we have all the information we need in in this regard. Again, I just want to say thank you again for joining us on the show. And um, until next time, I want to say please keep dreaming big. You know, God has a plan and a purpose for you. And go and impact the world around you. Remember, the Bible says God knew us even before we were conceived. And the thoughts that he has for you and I, they are good they're not of evil to take us to that expectant hand. And remember, everything that you're going through right now is working for your good. And, again, I want to say thank you for joining us on the show. Um, get inspired with Joyce. I'm your host again, Joyce Sajanaku. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.
take a moment right now and just appreciate my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You've been good to me, God. My Father, my Savior, my Redeemer, my Lord, there's none like you. My Savior, my Redeemer. 